The weather is about to get very active over the next several days as we are going to have multiple days of severe weather with a few severe weather outbreaks being possible next week, which will bring the threat for significant damaging winds, large to very large hail, and multiple tornadoes across a large chunk of the United States. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down everything that you need to know about this severe weather event that will be impacting the United States as we go throughout the work week and even into next weekend. We will begin first, though, with what's happening today in terms of severe weather as this is basically going to be a multi-day severe weather event which all begins today and we have a couple of different areas that we're watching for the first of which is back down in the southeast where we do have a large marginal threat of severe weather which is going to be for your typical springtime thunderstorms this is a very typical area that we do see severe weather in this time of the year where we're going to be watching for some isolated hail isolated damaging winds and perhaps maybe an isolated tornado or two we also have a slight risk in a narrow corridor which is going to be mainly for the wind threat out of a little cluster of storms that's developed late this morning that will continue across southern Georgia and northern Florida. We also have another marginal threat of severe weather which goes from the upper Michigan Peninsula back into eastern Kansas where there's going to be another isolated risk for some damaging winds and hail and then another small marginal threat back over in Colorado and Kansas. Now today isn't super concerning compared to the next few days which we'll get to in just a moment. This is the tornado risk, by the way, for today. Again, very low tornado risk up and down the Treasure Coast of Florida, all the way back near Jacksonville, maybe a brief tornado or two. And that same thing goes for Southern Georgia as well. Here's what it looks like on the infrared imagery right now. Notice a large complex of showers and thunderstorms ongoing right now across the Southeast. And this will continue to pose a risk for some damaging winds and hail and maybe an isolated tornado. All that dark red that you're seeing here, those are all just cold cloud tops aloft. So these are some pretty large thunderstorms that are ongoing now, and they are going to continue to pose at least a low threat for severe weather. And here's that other low pressure system that's bound to bring a few more severe storms to areas in the Midwest as we go into the afternoon. But overall, again, the threat is relatively low for today. And then once we go into tomorrow, there is going to be a threat for maybe a small scale severe weather outbreak that is going to occur in the Central Plains. And notice we have a large marginal threat that goes from North Dakota back into West Western Oklahoma, but our main focus point is going to be in southern Nebraska near like Kearney, for example, all the way back into central Kansas, where there will definitely be some photogenic storms here that are going to produce the threat for significant damaging winds as high as 80 to 85 miles per hour at times. Large to very large hail is also going to be a possibility out of those initial discrete cells, which will be primarily focused in this corridor back over in western Kansas and a very small sliver of northwest Oklahoma, and then perhaps even a a few tornadoes will also be a possibility. There's also another marginal threat in Florida, which again, very typical for this time of the year. It's just going to be ordinary hail and wind storms, nothing really too far beyond that. Here's that wind concern. Notice we do have a hatched area that does represent at least a 10% probability within a 25 mile radius of damaging winds that exceed 75 miles per hour. So definitely make sure that you're hatching down trampolines. I've seen a lot of flying trampoline posts back over in Houston, Texas from the other day when we saw that significant damaging wind event roll right through Houston. So make sure that you're hatching down those trampolines, protecting any loose lawn items and all that sort of stuff. Just make sure that you're prepared for that damaging wind threat, especially if you're in Kansas. The hail threat is going to be much more elevated back over in western Kansas and northwest Oklahoma, as I alluded to a moment ago. That is where we'll have a potential for hail storms to produce hail as large as the size of apples, which is three inches in diameter. So make sure that you're also protecting your vehicle. Tornado risk is going to be a bit more elevated across central and western Kansas as well where we will probably at least get a couple of tornadoes but we might even get a few across this large area across again most of Kansas and then even back into a small sliver of southeast Nebraska and as well as northwest Oklahoma. And then as we go into Monday things are going to quiet down I think just a little bit. It looked like Monday might be a bit more significant than Sunday but at least for the time being the Storm Prediction Center just has a large slight risk from Kansas back into Iowa. There's also a marginal threat that goes back Back into Wisconsin, where we'll be watching once again for the threat of damaging winds, large hail, and maybe even a couple or even a few tornadoes across areas in the central plains back into the Midwest. It's overall not a super big concern, but we'll talk about it a little bit here in just a moment. The bigger concern and probably the biggest outbreak that we'll have all week, at least currently forecasted, is going to be on tossing trampolines on Tacos Tuesday. We do have a large enhanced risk of severe weather across Illinois, Wisconsin, Iowa, Missouri, and even to the eastern. 
Kansas, where we'll have the threat for some very significant severe weather, and more than likely, we are going to see several storms, if not a ton of them, that are going to be producing significant damaging winds, large to very large hail, and as well as a few tornadoes, and a couple of strong tornadoes are also not going to be ruled out in this particular environment. And we'll talk about why in just a moment, but one of the biggest reasons why is that we're going to have a low pressure system that is negatively tilted, and the ones that are negatively tilted often produce the more significant severe weather threat, as they are most of the time stronger than the other ones that are positively tilted, for example. And we'll show this in more detail in just a moment to explain it better. But overall, again, that is where the greatest concern for severe weather will be. We are still going to have some severe storms anywhere in that slight risk as well, which goes all the way back down into Oklahoma, by the way. So this is a huge area. We'll also probably have a marginal threat that goes back down into like the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So once again, very large area for Tuesday. I think Tuesday will be the biggest day for severe weather out of the entire work week. Uh, once again, things could definitely change a little bit, but right now signs are definitely pointing towards this being a severe weather outbreak. So what does this exactly all mean? Well, we're going to check out the jet stream to give you an idea of the weather pattern that is happening across the United States. And right now we just have this persistent jet stream that's in place. That's going to continue to allow for multiple storm systems to basically roll right across the Great Plains, Midwest, and Ohio Valley and bring multiple days of severe weather. So for Monday, we are going to have some showers and storms from a trough that's going to enter into areas like the Central Plains and eventually move into the Midwest as we go into late Monday night. By Tuesday, though, we are going to be watching for this negatively tilted trough to develop back over in the western Midwest, and this will start to create a strong southwesterly and southerly flow in the Midwest, which will elevate the severe weather risk quite a bit. We should have a lot of spin in the atmosphere as well, so any storms that become even discrete or semi-discrete will likely have a better shot at producing a tornado risk. With that said, it looks as if a lot of the storms on Tuesday are going to be more of a linear variety, meaning we're probably going to have more of a line of storms that'll produce damaging winds and also maybe a few embedded tornadoes. And then once we go into Wednesday and Thursday, this low pressure system does continue to move eastbound. We'll probably at least have some risk of severe weather in the Ohio Valley on Wednesday, but as of now, it does not look substantial, but I would still be watching the weather closely if you are in the Ohio Valley. By Thursday, we're going to have another trough move across the Southern Plains, and that'll also bring a risk for severe weather. There's another slight risk down there that we'll show you there in just a second. And then by Friday and the Saturday of the upcoming weekend, we are likely going to at least get one or two more storms that'll also pose a threat for more severe weather here in the United States. But those remain relatively uncertain as we are still well over five to seven days out from those events. And before we go into the future radar, I did want to show you the 500 millibar height anomalies. This will give you an idea of the colliding air masses that we're going to have as we go into Monday into Tuesday. So notice all that cold air that's back up in Canada with the different low pressure systems there. Still got a lot of warm air anywhere from the southern plains back into the northeast. But notice this as we go into Monday into Tuesday. We're going to be watching for multiple different storm systems to essentially collide and basically bring a lot of energy into one area. We're going to have all that moisture coming out of the Pacific Ocean. We're going to have all that cold air that's going to be diving out of Canada. And this will eventually lead to just one uniform storm as we go into Tuesday. And notice how that storm really starts to deepen in height across areas in the northern plains in the upper Midwest. And that is why this event is a little bit more concerning than the other ones, because we're going to have two different air masses essentially colliding with each other, kind of combining energy in a way. And that's going to eventually lead to the threat for a significant severe weather outbreak there in the Midwest. And this is one of the stronger low pressure systems that I've seen here in quite a while, at least in the United States. So that'll be something to watch for closely. Now, I kind of left this out of the other severe weather graphics, but I didn't want to mention, again, tossing trampolines on tall trees Thursday. We do have another slight risk in the Southern Plains, including Louisiana, Arkansas, Texas, and Oklahoma, where damaging winds, hail, and a few tornadoes will be possible. Now, let's go through the timing for the next few days, and we will begin first with what's happening tomorrow. We'll have some showers and storms erupting across areas in the Central and Southern Plains. We'll have a more detailed timing breakdown on this tomorrow, so stay tuned. But overall, most of those storms will be happening really around the late afternoon into the evening hours with damaging winds, hail, and a couple of tornadoes. Once we go into the late evening and into Monday morning, those storms will move into the Midwest. The threat of severe weather in the Midwest should remain relatively low. By late Monday night, those storms will start to ramp up again in the Central Plains where more severe weather will be a possibility. Strengthening low pressure system will eventually move northeast as we go into late Tuesday evening. This will pose a significant threat for severe weather anywhere from Oklahoma back into areas like eastern Iowa and eventually going to Illinois and Wisconsin by the mid to late evening hours. 
by the overnight hours those storms will be moving into like central and southeastern parts of illinois and even back through arkansas and eventually as we go into wednesday that storm activity does begin to kind of fizzle a little bit we could even see some snow by the way even back over northern minnesota just for reference this is gonna be a very strong low pressure system down near 988 millibars by the time we go into uh, wednesday afternoon more storms will be possible across a large corridor from texas back into ohio overall severe weather does not look to be a significant concern right now but we are going to be watching that closely in case anything does ramp up there and as we go into thursday friday and as well saturday things do become a little bit more uncertain but we are likely at least going to have some level of severe weather on thursday in the southern plains and then maybe on the east coast on friday and then after that things just become very uncertain after that but make sure you're subscribed to the channel and we'll keep you posted with the latest as we get closer to all of these severe weather events